Hello everybody, my name is Alexi and today we'll go over the use of Blast inside your terminal. As you might have known, if you probably clicked on the video, you might have, you might have some idea of already what Blast is, but rapidly Blast stands for Basic Local Alignment Search Tool. And of course, it's very, very, very important to have some idea what it does as it's used in many, many areas of health sciences. For example, it helps researchers answer the question of, is there any mutations in semi sequence? Or for example, is there any uh, species with similar proteins inside of them? Is there any, uh, any what is actually the protein sequence that's analogous to my nucleotide sequence? And a lot more questions. You're probably already familiar if you use BLAST, of course, with this interface right here. So it allows you to run both BLAST-N, BLAST-P, BLAST-X, and T-BLAST-N. Probably you already know what BLAST-N and BLAST-P are. So rapidly BLAST-N is BLAST for nucleotides and BLAST-P is for proteins. However, if you have a nucleotide sequence and you're interested in blasting against proteins, you can use BLAST-X. And the opposite, when you have a protein or amino acid sequence and you're interested in blasting against nucleotide, you can use T-BLAST-N. However, of course, using web interfaces is not the most, well, of course, it's not the best way if you want to automate a process or maybe include a BLAST similar pipeline. Or maybe if you're just interested in learning uh, how to use BLAST from the terminal, well, it's going to be quite hard in using these versions. However, the software that's running in the background is also available for download and for usage from the terminal. To do so, what you can just run is run Blast Plus from, uh, from your favorite uh, web browser and of course click on the first one associated with the NIH. Once you're here, click on the first link that's right here and you'll be prompted with this file. Of course, as you see right here, I've done it many times to test it. We'll download one last time together. So I'll download the Mac OS X version, the tarball right here. There's other version. You can look into which one you want. If you want to have the RPM, depending on if you want your distro for Linux or just want the general Linux or you're running on Windows, I'll personally use the NCBI version. Now, at the same time, what you can do is actually download the practice data set, which is available on uh, studentpharma.ca. I'll actually write it Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. As you know, we're uh, a bunch of students bringing chemo emphatics to students. Uh, but here on the tutorial, uh, it should change, of course, soon as soon as this uh, this video is uploaded. Of course, we have one on protein imaging, but that's uh, another story, of course. But just click on here on Blast Practice Data. It's also going to download the tarball that's going to be used during this tutorial. Now simply hop on to your favorite tutorial. I use iTerm personally, as it's a little bit clearer than the stock terminal. There's different, uh, there's different ways you can work around with it, but uh, simply hop onto your favorite terminal. Now that everything's actually being downloaded, I'm just gonna clear everything. Okay. And now just gonna move the, the recently downloaded file from my downloads. Uh, so it's called NCBI Blast to my current directory and I'm going to decompress it. So XVF is going to be the flax I'm going to be using and uh, decompress it in CPI blast perfect. It's going to decompress nicely. Now I'm just going to remove the file as it's just going to take extra space and I don't necessarily want it on my computer. And then I'm going to rename it. It's just going to use the move version, the move option this to uh, to Tutorial Blast. That should do the case. Perfect. Now I'm just going to CD in my Tutorial Blast directory and show you guys what's in there. So what's in there is you have the README, the license, the changelog, but what's interesting is all inside the bin. Once you, you're inside the bin, you see all of the software that's accessible to you. Now simply, uh, if you're not aware of this, well, there's something called the path that allows the computer to get access to the files that are present in the path anywhere you are in the file tree. So I would be interested, let's say, in running my blast command elsewhere, not necessarily into tutorials blast slash bin. I may be interested in running it in a downloaded file or in another directory. To do so, to allow the user to do it, you just write your path and add it as so. 
if you're working on Windows. I have no idea if that's the case. PowerShell might offer you a different option. However, if you're running right now on a bash um, on a bash shell, that should allow you to do it. If you're running on any other types of shell, again, I'm not too sure the same process still applies. You should just check, but if there's anything similar, feel free to do so. Okay, so now I'm just gonna add it. This is an old, um, an old habit of mine of actually adding uh, the squigglies. Uh, but of course you don't have to, okay? So now that's added to my path, I can actually be in CD right here. And uh, just right blast. And as you see it, you have access to all the, uh, all the things that start with blast that were offered inside this particular directory. Okay, now if I, I look at it, I have my blast practice data right here. Now I want to decompress it. So I just run again tar dot xvf and blast practice data. Okay, now if I list, I have the file that's called blast practice data set number one FASTA, insulin AAA unknown and insulin nucleotide unknown. Okay, so the, the purpose of this exercise is to decide from which species do these two unknown insulin sequence come from. The reason why I chose insulin, it's very short. If you have a very old computer or anything, as long as you can actually download the data, you should have no problem running it. They're really small. It's not, it should not be too compute, computatively expensive for your computer. Okay, so now what we want to do is actually make a database out of our, here our blast practice data set one. If you can actually less it, uh, you see that we have different sequence. Here we have 11 sequence from different species. Okay, so very, of course, it's a very, very small database, but of course it's going to run on anything. Okay, now what we can do is simply make a database. To do this, you just run make, uh, make blast database. So here we're going to insert this sequence. Actually, what would be really relevant is simply to show you what you can do with uh, by writing H. So now if you had H is the help page, okay? So it allows you to decide all the possible options that you have. So we're gonna write simply uh, make blast DB. So of course help was just what we think. So we're gonna have our ins or input file. Our input file is gonna be this one, okay? So just gonna add it here, blast practice uh, data set number one. If you go here, we don't want to have a hash. Uh, we don't want to make it make mass the data. There's no necessary data to remove, but we want to parse by sequence ID. So we're just going to remove this. Uh, oh, it's not going to add, of course. So you just can copy paste it. If you have uh, a mouse, what you can do is just go over it like this and press on the middle scrolling button. It's going to add it right away. So make blast DB and blast here. Perfect, and the out, let's call it uh, blast underscore db, like this. Okay. Now that's actually working. Oh, I need, of course, to write the type of database that we're gonna have. So now here, it's as you saw here, it was amino acid, so just write prot right here, okay? Oh, having an error right here, what you can see is, Mm-hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay. DB type, I just opposite it, DB and type. And if you run, everything runs together very, very smoothly. Everybody is very happy right now. Uh, so now if you just LS it, now as you can see, you get all these files are really relevant uh, for actually they need to be in the same directory as your uh, your command so now we're just going to keep in my home directory it's just easy access for all of us and there's no long file names right here so we get a nice clear view okay so now we're going to press a blast p okay blast p my uh we're going to run at h so we're going to see what we need so now we're going to have of course um 
going to run blast and p. Now we're going to look here. So we don't need to import. You don't need to export anything. So do you want to give a name to your task? Personally, if you run on a server, it could be very relevant. Right now, it's not very important. Our DB, our database, is going to be blast DB. So you can just either copy paste it or just add it like this. Perfect. No points because you want all of these to be included. So just like this. You can just keep going. Pa, 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 pa. Okay. So now you just can have query. Query, my query right now is going to be one of our knowns that's in, of course, uh, uh, amino acid type. So insulin, A, 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 right here. So insulin, A, A, and on FASTA. My out file is going to be, uh, let's call it aligned.text. Now, if you just look at it, what it looks like. So now we just aligned it, and now we can determine which one is the most the most probable to be the case. And we see here there's an A value that's really high. Rapidly, the E value is the change the chance that our sequence matches this one from a pure random reason. So here it's almost impossible. There's two uh, uh, two to the minus ninety five. So it's almost impossible that we got actually a match per mistake. So you can see that they're very similar either way, all of them are very similar. So insulin in general actually is very similar uh, nonetheless to all of this, these different species. But you can see here we have a perfect match for here. And if we go to the next one, we see that there's no, there's some of them that are actually missing. And if we keep going down, we're going to see more and more matches. Of course, if you use to be using Blast on the website, you see it's a very, very similar output. Okay. So right now, our question was, uh, what did the sequence, uh, what, from which species did the sequence belong to? And we see here that we're actually having a very, 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 actually an exact match to our, um, to our uh, Ceralitis capitata. And if we look what the species actually looks like, right here, we can see that it's a Mediterranean fruit fly, of course. So we were expecting something very different from maybe mammalians, but we, if we go back here, we said that things like the gorilla is actually very, very similar, right? It's not perfect. It's far from being perfect, but there's some similarity right here, right? It's far from 260, but we see that here we're having some matches. It's quite interesting. It's very, very, very distant, right? 29% identity. There's 51% positive. There's a lot of gaps. And, um, and uh, there, there's a relatively low score, but there's still some relevance, right? It's quite interesting. I find it very interesting. So there's some conservation, very, even from very, very distant uh, relative. Okay, of course, an insect is very far from being a gorilla. So now let's leave and let's do something similar. Uh, by the way, you just press Q. It's going to help you leave. Um, right, let's do it again. Just press Q. Right, we're out of there. Now let's uh, try to send something to the server and actually blast it against everything we know. So now we're going to do a blast n. So our, our query, uh, our query is going to be uh, this one with nucleotides. Our database is going to be empty. So it's going to be a nucleotide database. And if you see here, you have the, uh, the flag that's remote. Remote is actually going to send it to the, uh, uh, to the, uh, to the servers offered by NIH. So actually, NT is a database. If you go back here, let's go on. We're doing a nucleotide. NT is actually one of their database right here. So we're actually sending them to the to the website and receiving an answer back. Okay. So now it's going to run. So here we're actually receiving all the data live as it's actually happening. Okay. So we're getting a lot of matches. So it's basically running right now. This is an advantage as it's not being very computatively expensive on your computer. So now, ooh, so we're getting a lot of data, right? We're getting a lot of data. So actually here, we're getting, uh, basically here is our worst match. So picketed pepsidin, insulin again. Again, pretty extra insulin. And if we keep going up, 
going to get some data. If you want, don't want this to happen rapidly, you just add the out flag and let's say we're going to have this called, uh, I don't know, uh, flowers, just go insulin, insulin out. Okay. Just running it again. Now, as you can see, it's actually not posting anything to your terminal. It's actually funneling it inside of there. Okay. When that's done, we'll be able to open it and actually see the first hit. But if you want something very quick, instantaneous, you have no space on your computer, or very little space, you don't want to make another file, or it's, it's very small, you don't really care, you can just have no out flag and no out option and simply let it out. So if you just less insulin add out, we see here that our first match here is Homo sapiens, and it's actually Homo sapiens for a long time, actually. It's actually a perfect match all the time with almost, uh, it's not because zero is bad, it's because zero is because it's so small that it estimates it to be zero. So actually they're almost perfect for all these species, but the best match here in score is the Homo sapiens. So we can see that our nucleotide sequence is this insulin nucleotide unknown is probably from humans. Okay. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, just leave it in the comments. And I hope you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.